Hey YouTube, my name is Jared Decker. I am a printer and a photographer. And today's video, we're gonna talk about printing from Adobe Lightroom with the Canon Pro 100. This is not a printer I use that often, but I know it's really popular. Canon made it super affordable through promotions over the years. Um, so a lot of people out there have that printer. It's a, it's a nice step up from your normal, just little office printer. So this method will apply to pretty much any printer you use. Um, it's just roll printers have a couple couple different little things in there. Lightroom makes it kind of funky the way they set up the print module. Um, it's a little bit different than a lot of the software I'm used to. So it kind of intimidated me for a long time and I had a lot of misprints because I just didn't really grasp it. It was before I was doing a ton of printing. Um, so I wanted to kind of point those things out and uh, make it so hopefully you can save some ink and save some paper and, and get the prints that you want. All right, here we go. All right, here we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Um, this is the image we are going to play with today. It's a photograph I took last fall of Hood River and Mount Hood. Um, start by going up and clicking the print module. All right, so the print module is divided into these two sides. On this side, you have page setup, which is paper. That is just your paper. It's not the size of the image you want to end up with. It's the size of the piece of paper that you're putting into your printer. Print settings opens up your print driver. Now I do not typically use this button and I'll show you why. Um, on this side you have print and printer. So printer opens up your print driver as well. Print just prints. So if you set your paper up in here, set your print settings up in here so your printer's configured just how you want it, you can add templates. So you only have to do that one time. Um, but I use a bunch of different printers, so I don't want to do that because my print settings often change. So I select my paper in here, and then every time I print, I select printer instead of just selecting print, and it opens up the driver and allows me to double check all my settings, and then I can print from there. But if you want to use templates and you're only printing to the Pro 100, by all means, you can just set it here. Okay, page setup. First thing you're going to do is you're going to select your printer, Canon Pro 100. All right, now Canon Pro 100 prints to 13 by 19 A3 paper. That's a standard size, so it comes pre-installed on your Mac. So <clears throat> if you click that, you have borderless, regular and art paper margin 30. I'm not honestly sure what that is. Um, it's probably just a different size margin. The 13 by 19 is going to stock put on the minimum margins that your printer requires. If you do borderless, you can go all the way to the edge, but you need to make sure when you're printing later, when you're in your driver, that you actually set it to borderless. Um, I typically do not like to print borderless. I like to have a small border for me to handle the photograph without getting fingerprints on the image itself. So we're gonna select 13 by 19. Now you're gonna notice that your paper says 12.95 by 19.02. A3 paper is not actually 13 by 19. It's 12.9 inches by 19.02 inches. And that does matter. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, real quick though, before we get out of here, let's say you want to use a piece of 12 by 18 paper that you happen to have. So to do that, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom to manage custom sizes. Click that. Click the plus sign, scroll to the bottom where it says Untitled, this is your new piece of paper. Okay, and we're gonna enter 12 by 18. So this is really important. One of the most important things when it comes to printing. Whenever you do a page setup or create a paper size, you always have to enter the width in the right spot. So a Canon Pro 100 is gonna print a 13 by 19, 13 by 19 sheet this way. So 13 inches is always going to be your width. If you put 19 first, 19 by 13, it would print it wrong. However, if you had a larger printer and you put the paper in 19 inches wide and you still typed it in as 13 by 19, it would print it the other direction and your print would be off. It would be garbage. So you always have to keep in mind which direction your paper is going into the printer. And that's the first number you use. It's your width. So in this case, it's gonna be, we're pretending we have a 12 by 18 sheet of paper, 12 by 18. 
Now up here, non-printable area, that is your computer's stock or standard margins. So these are the margins that the Pro 100 requires. Unless you're doing borderless, you would do zeros here, and then in your driver, you would go and select borderless printing, but we're not doing that right now. So you would just select 12, 18, and click OK. And it would create this so you can use it in the future. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna stick with our 13 by 19. Um, so A3 plus 13 by 19, click OK. And that gives us this 13 by 19 piece of paper. Now, if we're gonna use these regularly, you can go over here to the little plus sign, name your template 13 by 19. And we'll just remember that that has standard, the standard border, it's not borderless. Um, and folder, user templates, we can create that. So now every time we come back, we just click this and it will bypass that whole thing that we just went through. Um, so if we had done 12 by 18 and we had saved that piece of paper, we can create a template for that. And then anytime we used a 12 by 18 piece of paper, we just click 12 by 18 in the template browser and it'll bring up that piece of paper. Okay, so we have our 13 by 19. Now you can see there's a, a light gray edge that's thicker on the bottom. That's that stock standard margin that your printer requires. So it's not gonna let us drag our photo beyond that. All right, so now up in our layout style, we have three options. Single image contact sheet, which if you have multiple images, all the same size, or just one large image, single image, then this is what you want to use. Um, if I wanted to do several prints of this same picture, then I would need to go to picture package. Custom package, you can do whatever you want. But we're going to start in single image contact sheet. So I leave zoom to fill checked, rotate to fit checked, and now we get into our layout. So we're going to print a 12 by 18 on this 13 by 19 with a half inch border all the way around. So half inch for your margins, one row, one column, because we're doing one image. Cell size, you're gonna see these numbers are a little funky. Remember how we, how I pointed out that the, that the paper size was actually 12.95? So this will not let you make an actual 12 inch. So the only way you can get this all the way to 12 is by adjusting these margins. But I don't really care. 11.95 is just fine for the width of my print. Um, so I'm going to leave it at 18.95. If we really only wanted this 18, we could just change this number to 18. And there you go. Okay, but let's say I want two 8x12s on here instead of one 12x18. Now remember, if I want two 8x12s of this image, I have to go to picture package. Let's say I want this image and a different one, both 8x12s. Let's say this is the only paper I have and I want two 8x12 prints. So we're gonna use the rows and columns for this. Now rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. On this piece of paper to get two 8x12s, we are gonna need two rows. So we'll just change that to two. Now you'll see that our size is not an 8x12. So we're gonna change this to eight and we're gonna leave that at 11.95. I'm sure you understand why by now. So now for the second image, you simply need to either shift, push shift or command and click another photo and that'll add it. So now I'm gonna get these two prints. Okay, now let's say I want a bunch of smaller prints. Let's add some rows. Let's add some columns. Now, if you do it this way, it's gonna tell you what your size that you've created is for your cell. You can also add space in between the cells with cell spacing. Um, but if you want five by sevens on here, if you want a whole sheet, um, you wanna keep adding photos. Let's say you want all these in five by seven, you're gonna actually need to do the math and lay this out properly. Um, I'm just doing it really fast to show you, to show you how you can do it. But I've used this in the past when somebody's ordered, you know, 50 or 60 uh, five by seven pictures and I'm gonna use my roll printer rather than print individual ones. So I print them onto a sheet and then I just cut it up for them. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that. But let's say I want 
two copies of that original uh, Mount Hood photo. So if we're gonna do that, we're gonna go to picture package because it's two copies of the same photo. Um, select the photo you want, there you go. Okay, now if you wanted to do some other stuff, you could do custom package. Um, let's say I want this one, that, drag it up there. Uh, we'll say I want a five by seven of this picture. And let's say I want a four by six of this picture. So you can put whatever you want, wherever you want, drag them around, space them however you want them. And that is custom package. So let's say we're just going to do two of the Mount Hub ones. Whoops, wrong button there. Clear our layout um, picture package. We're going to go this guy, two 8 by 12s and that's what we want to print. All right, we can close this. I'll scroll down here to print job. Print to printer. Um, you can also export this as a JPEG if you want. Uh, print resolution 300 PPI. Print sharpening, standard, media type, glossy. If you're using matte paper, switch this to matte. Anything else, you're using glossy, basically. 16-bit 16 16 -bit output, you can leave that checked. Now, color management. Okay, the Canon Pro 100 has a bunch of issues with this. It likes to double profile if you don't hook the printer upright. If you're having this problem and you're getting really dark colors or magenta cast, go check out my other videos. I'll link them in the description below on how you should be able to fix this. Once that's fixed, you're gonna select the profile to match your paper. We're gonna be using Red River Ultra Pro Satin 4.0 for the Canon Pro 100. This is a profile that you get from your paper manufacturer and you have to install it on your computer, one for each different kind of paper you use. In this case, we're using the Red River Ultra, Pro, Ultra Satin 4.0, Canon Pro 100. There we go. I use Perceptual when I'm printing photos. Um, print adjustment, I do not use. If it's a really dark image and I think it's gonna print and I wanna make sure it's bright enough, I can go in and I can bump the image exposure up by about a quarter of a stop. Also, make sure your monitor brightness is at about 50%. If you're editing with your monitor really, really bright, you know your monitor has light behind it. A piece of paper does not. So your, your prints are gonna look way darker than they do on your screen. So always turn your brightness on your monitor down. I try never, no matter what I'm doing on my computer, I try to keep it at 50% or lower. Um, all right, so from there, click printer. Now remember, if you had done print settings, already gone through all this, you can just click the print button. Um, all right, so we're gonna select the printer we're using, Canon Pro 100, um, ignore the presets, um, layout color matching, we want color sync, not Canon color matching. Um, paper handling cover page, don't bother with that stuff. Quality and media. Media type, this is what Red River told me to set my printer for to use this paper. So for every different paper you use, you might need to change this setting. Make sure you check with the manufacturer. Rear tray, quality high. If we were doing borderless, how we spoke about earlier about no margins, you would select that here. Um, extension is how much your printer goes past the edge of the paper. Um, generally one of these middle settings is where I like to stay. Um, and then once you have these things set, you can create a preset, which is what I did to create this Red River Satin preset. And then I just click print and you are done. So that's it, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. Um, I'm enjoying making these videos, so if you have any print questions in general or specifically about the Canon Pro 100, do not hesitate to ask. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks.